For young action figure collectors growing up in the 1980s, the most highly desired toys were the exclusive mail-away figures that were offered by many toy companies at the time. And the ability to add these mail-away figures to your collection was most often dependent on how much of the line you had already collected, since you needed to save up several proofs of purchase, which could then be sent away in exchange for a figure that was not available in retail stores. And once you'd sent away for your exclusive action figure, you'd have to wait six to eight weeks for it to arrive. And that felt like a lifetime when you were eight years old. But when that exciting day did finally come, you would open the mailbox and find a small plain parcel, which contained the action figure you'd been longing for. And at that exact moment, you felt like you'd just joined an elite collector's club. While the phenomenon of mail away action figures is a classic trope of the 1980s, the concept of mail away action figure toys dates back much further. And in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into the history of mail away action figures, so stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey, toy fans, my name is Tony, and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel, where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures. Now, before we get started, I'll state up front that this video is not a list of every mail away action figure ever made. In this video, we're going to take a detailed look at the phenomenon of mail-away action figures and attempt to trace back the origins of the mail-away concept. So if you have a favorite mail-away action figure that doesn't get mentioned in this video, don't leave a comment telling me I forgot the Force Ghost Obi-Wan figure from 1997. Leaving you forgot comments on YouTube is insulting to the video creator and will no longer be tolerated on this channel. Leave a comment below accusing me of forgetting something and you'll be blocked from the channel. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the rest of the video. In vintage toy collecting circles, the concept of mail-away action figures was made famous, or should that be infamous, by two Kenner Star Wars offers. The first of which is the Early Bird Certificate Package, and the second is the now legendary Rocket Firing Boba Fett action figure. But more on those a bit later. While the idea of mail-away toy offers did start in comic books, all of my research into this subject points to the British company Palatoy as being the first toy manufacturer to link the concept to an action figure brand, with their flagship toy line Action Man, way back in 1966. Action Man was a licensed rebranding of Hasbro's popular 12-inch G.I. Joe toy line, and when Palatoy introduced the Action Man range to the marketplace, they came up with the ingenious idea of the star scheme, where the majority of Action Man products came with stars on the packaging that a child could collect and once they had saved up 21 stars, they were able to send away for a free undressed Action Man figure. While this scheme was an excellent idea at the time, later it would become the curse of many vintage Action Man enthusiasts who were trying to collect mint in box items. And that's because the cardboard stars had to be cut from the retail packaging, leaving very few good condition examples around today. As the Action Man line continued to be successful, Palatoy began offering more star gifts throughout the 1970s, including a Royal Canadian Mounted Police uniform, which is just stunning, and could almost be considered a mail-away exclusive if it weren't for the fact that it was briefly sold at retail on a card back that is extremely difficult to find today. Through the star scheme, Palatoy also offered items such as a bull mastiff guard dog named Brutus, a selection of paperback adventure stories, and an Action Man toolkit which came complete with a variety of hand tools and a working vehicle jack. Palatoy's star scheme was both successful and a very clever marketing gimmick, because if a child had 19 stars and they only needed 21 stars to get a new Action Man figure, a parent was more willing to purchase an extra accessory set for their child in order to get the additional stars needed to obtain the free gift, and this concept increased sales of Action Man products. But despite Palatoy's success with the star scheme, the next toy company to present an action figure mail-away offer did so out of necessity, as opposed to any desire to increase sales or get consumers hooked on the collecting bug. And that was when Kenner secured the rights to make toys based on the globally popular movie of Star Wars that was released in cinemas in 1977. But as history would teach us, no one within the company had predicted the overwhelming success of the movie, and every child across the world was screaming out for Star Wars action figures, but there was nothing available. With no hope of getting Star Wars action figures in stores by Christmas 1977, Kenner opted to sell kids a cardboard display stand, which also included a mail-away offer for the first four Star Wars action figures that would ship to children between February and June of the following year. Fast forward to 1979 and Kenner's Star Wars action figure line had become the most popular boys toy brand in the world. And by that point, the company had released a wide variety of toys and 20 different action figures when they introduced the mail-away offer for a mysterious new Star Wars character named Boba Fett. 
Early advertising indicated that this figure was not available in any stores and that he would come with a rocket firing backpack feature. But due to the death of a young boy who choked on a missile from a Mattel made Battlestar Galactica toy, Kenner removed the rocket firing feature before the figure was sent out to consumers. Since a number of prototypes of the rocket firing Boba Fett have made their way into collectors hands, this action figure is now the most highly coveted vintage Kenner Star Wars collectible in existence. There are two different categories of mail away action figures, and those are early release figures and genuine exclusive action figures, and it's important to differentiate between the two. Over the next few years, Kenner continued to offer mail away action figures, but aside from the rocket firing Boba Fett, which was never released at retail anyway, all of these offerings were early release figures that would eventually find themselves hanging from toy store pegs later down the line. It's Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back action figures. 47 in all, each sold separately. Here's new Bespin guards, ADAT commander, and Imperial TIE fighter pilot. Now you can get this new 4LOM action figure free for five proofs of purchase from any Star Wars action figures. Details on specially marked packages at participating stores. Offer expires August 31st, 1982. New Bespin guard, new ADAT commander, new Imperial TIE fighter pilot, each sold separately. From Kenner Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back collection. In the United Kingdom in 1982, Palatoid decided to shrink down their popular Action Man line to the three and three quarter inch scale in an attempt to compete with Star Wars toys. This new line of action figures would be renamed Action Force, and the initial wave included a mail away offer for an Action Force Commander figure that would never be made available at retail, making this figure a true exclusive. With the success of the Action Force line continuing, Palatoid would offer more exclusive mail away figures, including the Z Force Commander, who is simply a recolor of the earlier Action Force Commander figure, and Skeletron, an action figure that was designed by Palatoy legend Bob Breakin, and was at one point going to be called Roboskull, until Palatoy's marketing department decided that the name Roboskull should be given to their iconic new toy vehicle that had also been designed by Bob Breakin. Throughout the 1980s, many other action figure lines took advantage of mail away offers, and notable entries include the Mummy Mumra figure from LJ and Thundercats line, the awesome Clark Kent figure from Superpowers, and even Transformers got in on the mail away action, whereby a child could collect up robot points and send away for the transforming camera known as Reflector. When Kenner launched their Adventures of Indiana Jones toy line in 1982, they also offered a mail away figure in the form of Belloc in ceremonial robe. And despite the fact that a few carded examples of this figure have made their way into the hands of collectors, these carded versions are extremely rare salesman samples with this figure never being available at retail, making Belloc in ceremonial robe another true mail away exclusive. And then we get the infamous Masters of the Universe figure that has been dubbed by many as Wonderbread He-Man. Also sometimes referred to as Savage He-Man, the true origins of this figure were shrouded in mystery for many years, until it was recently proven to be a mail away figure, offered by Mattel as part of a buy one get one free promotion. But in my opinion, there was one 80s toy line that utilized the mail away concept better than any other line before or since. And that was Hasbro's G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. And this toy line offered a massive variety of products through their mail away scheme, including some figures that would later be offered at retail, as well as true exclusives, such as the hooded Cobra Commander action figure. In my collection, I have the Sergeant Slaughter action figure that came packed in with his Triple T vehicle, but Hasbro also offered an exclusive version of this figure with a different paint scheme. That Joe's surrounded by Cobras. Yeah, but that Joe's Sergeant Slaughter. He's joined the G.I. Joe team. So we're celebrating by giving away Sergeant Slaughter action figures, but you can't buy them in stores. You've got to earn them. Here's how. Collect five Sergeant Slaughter certificates or call the number on the certificate and Sergeant Slaughter will tell you how to get in on the action with only four certificates. There's a $1 handling charge. See details in specially marked packages. G.I. Joe. Nobody takes on Cobras better than Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, Joe. In 1987, Hasbro also offered up the unique concept of the Steel Brigade figure, where a child could be sent an action figure representing them, complete with personalized file card. Bobby Valla, the owner of the new Valiverse Action Force toy line, has the largest known Steel Brigade collection in the world. And he is such a fan of this figure, he has secured the rights to Steel Brigade and has introduced the character into his exciting new toy line. Hasbro didn't just offer mail away action figures for G.I. Joe, they also offered vehicles and other related toy products. For the UK launch of G.I. Joe in 1987, Hasbro renamed the brand Action Force International Heroes 
and later that year I became the proud owner of a MailAway exclusive Action Force membership pack. With another notable exclusive entry in the G.I. Joe line being the Manta Windsurfer Mini Vehicle. While Hasbro may have used the MailAway concept to the greatest effect in the 80s, they weren't the only toy company to offer action figure related toys, as evidenced by Kenner's MailAway Star Wars display stand. When darkness falls, justice shines through. It's Robocop Night Fighter. He glows in the dark. He's specially armed. And he's free. Free with three groups of purchase from any Robocop and the Ultra Police figures. Details on package. This offer will end. Although many toy companies continued to offer mail-away action figures in the 1990s, the popularity of the concept certainly reached its peak in the 1980s. And I doubt we'll ever see the resurgence of mail-away toys again. Although, when I think about that last statement, perhaps we're now living in a world where the concept of selling toys at retail is the idea that's really died. Today it seems as though almost every action figure offered by a major retailer is some kind of store exclusive, and the distribution of these toys is so poorly managed that most collectors resort to online stores or eBay to get their latest acquisitions. And when you order online, everything arrives by mail. And when everything's exclusive, it waters down the desirability of your product to where nothing is exclusive. Back in the 1980s, children collected the vast majority of their favourite action figure lines at retail, making the arrival of an exclusive mail-away figure a truly special occasion, creating memories that many of us will cherish for a lifetime. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can click here to check out our video where we discuss the influence of the 3 and 3 quarter inch scale. Or you can click down here to check out our video about Sergeant Slaughter and his triple T. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.